after some years of being driven by the manic desire for professional success, television presenter Jason Silva found himself at a creative and professional crossroads. His neuroticism and self-defeating thought patterns reaching an intolerable fever pitch. Was this anxiety or depression or both? All he knew was that he was no longer satisfied by so-called consensus reality and ego-driven status games. He ached instead for something decidedly more alive, something infinitely more mysterious. Unbeknownst to him, a strange council of psychedelic puppets has begun to gather invisibly around him. They'd received note of his plight and had decided to puppeteer a tie-dyed mythopoetic intervention. Driven by some strange poetic urge, Jason escaped to the world's most liberal city, the whimsical and delightful Amsterdam, where 17th century psychedelic canals crisscross crooked houses that stretched the known laws of physics while thousands of cyclists soared through the paradisical landscape. One day, while gallivanting across the colorful Amsterdam canals, a series of synchronistic maneuvers landed Jason across a strange and irradiating figure, a hierophanous, pulsating, self-transforming elf machine dressed like a long-haired blonde Latvian riding a bicycle. His name was Edgars. This psychedelic trickster quickly became a friend. An instant kinship was formed based on a shared love of magical realism, the sacred sublime, slapstick absurdity, and childlike wonder. Together, they went on a series of achingly beautiful psychedelic bike rides in the Dutch countryside, inspired by the classic accidental LSD bicycle trip first experienced by yours truly. It was precisely at the peak of an ecstatic cannabis bicycle reverie that Jason Silva and his sidekick Edgars Matusevich first saw the psychedelic puppets. As the duo soared across the landscape, their bicycles practically levitating off the ground, music blasting with rapture, the psychedelic puppets appeared across the sky like giant faces in the clouds. The shimmering kaleidoscopic revelation of it all stopped them in their tracks. A stupefied amazement to which both Jason and Edgars, gobsmacked by how much truth seemed to beam from these trickster figures as they draped the cosmos with their colorful, whimsical, free-floating presence. The shimmering puppets seemed suspended in midair. As they began speaking in some kind of translinguistic alphabet, communicating the felt presence of immediate experience. Their telepathic virtuosity, disclosing rich tapestries of felt meaning. As all contradictions seemed to instantly reconcile, their utterances an explosive manifestation of the mysterious tremendum that Jason had read so much about in his searching. The puppets proceeded to deliver an ecstatic dissertation on the art of what Timothy Leary called internal freedom, or what comparative literature professor David Lenson called stewardship of internal life. What is disliked must be avoided, but what is enjoyed must be enjoyed with contemplative exactitude, said the puppets, with the weight of divine truth. The real secret is time dilation, said the puppets. You must learn to bracket yourself off from strict chronometry, what E.E. E. Cummings called the colossal hoax of calendars and clocks, and enter instead a fusion of cognition and dream. This is nothing new, continued the puppets, the ancient Greeks also made this distinction between two modes of perception, chronos, or mechanized everyday reality, and kairos, which is poetic time. But know this, warned the puppets, once you become accustomed to constructing consciousness according to this cognitive quantum mechanics, the return to a Newtonian universe will be difficult to achieve. Such a reversion, it will seem to you, would require a renunciation of joy and play, of insight and vision, and of privileged knowledge and perception. It would entail a return to mechanized cognition. Jason and Edgar listened intensely, 
mouths gaped wide in astonishment, empowered by this knobs and levers approach to the shaping of their subjectivity. How dizzying the vertigo of freedom, they said to themselves. Beholding such blazing insight eventually gave way to a bout of irresistible hilarity as Jason and Edgar succumbed to a laughing fit to end all laughing fits, nature's epileptoid catharsis. Rolling on the grass alongside a cuddle puddle of psychedelic puppets passing cannabis joints around, the duo experienced the ecstasy of understanding. The puppets continued to hold space as more revelations followed channeling the illustrious William Blake while breaching the chrysalis of limited perception, the puppets evoked the world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower. They held infinity in the palm of their hands and eternity in an hour. In Aldous Huxley's words, they were seeing what Adam had seen on the morning of his creation, the miracle moment by moment of naked existence, the miracle of seeing things in all of their suchness. Eventually, through the sheer aesthetic force of their articulation, the puppets distilled the complex abstractions of astrophysics and consciousness, matter and mind, neurons and nebula, into singular expressions of color and light, poetry and prose, vindicating Keats' famous couplet, beauty is truth, truth is beauty ecstatic, maniacal laughter ensued. But remember these words by Flaubert. You must be disciplined and orderly in your life so that you can be violent and original in your work. Eventually the sun began to set. Impossibly beautiful purple and orange hues filled the sky. It was time to go. Jason and Edgar's blasted away on their bicycles as the psychedelic puppets waved goodbye. But wait, said Jason to the puppets, who are you? Where do you come from? Others need to know. The puppets turned, smiled, and seemed to search for the right turn of phrase, a way to articulate the paradox they embodied. How about this, offered the puppets, turning to an ancient, mysterious manuscript written by Jamie Wheel. As they opened the scrolls, rays of blinding light beamed from the pages. They began to read. We are some things to all people and all things to some. We are a stand-in, an ink blot, a scarecrow on fire. We are your future, your past, and truth-telling liars. We are the lie that reveals the truth. They closed the mysterious book and handed it to Jason. It was filled with poetry and prose, a literary holy of holies, written in the style of Dr. Seuss. With this, the psychedelic puppets dissolved into a refracting lens, revealing themselves to be a trans-dimensional intelligence beaming from Jason's inner world. The puppets blended into Jason and Edgar's until the two became indistinguishable from the puppets. From this moment onwards, Jason became a full-time artist, together with his sidekick, the blonde Latvian long-haired dreamer of dreams. Jason recorded rhapsodic stream of consciousness disclosures that lit up the world. Soon after, a manic pixie dream girl, possessed by the puppets herself, enamored Jason into a whirling dervish. Together, they had twin girls and a litter of psychedelic puppets and spent their days uttering ecstatic proclamations of amazement, gratitude, and grace while riding their electric cargo bikes with their twin girls, a dog, and the puppets into the sunset of the Dutch countryside. Thank you.